Hey, I'm Joel Wanasek. I'm a pro mixer and co-founder of NailedMix.com, the coolest place to learn how to mix music on the internet. And today I'm gonna break down a song that I love, while not one of the artist's most popular songs. This is one of his best, in my opinion. So we're gonna do Saddest Soundtrack by Ian Dior. I actually have no idea who mixed this. I was having a really hard time tracking it down. I know that Travis Barker produced this. So whoever mixed this, Awesome job. Let's take a look at this mix, react to this, and break this down piece by piece. All right, let's get going. Here we go. All right, I like the guitar. It's super mellow. There's a really cool reverb and ambience effects on it. Listen to that and pay attention to the ambience. Kind of sets a real nice somber mood. Now pay attention here when this kicks in. Let's start out with the drums and see what's going on with the beat. I'm gonna take your smile and turn it upside down. Okay, so what do we hear in terms of the balances? I'm gonna take the sun and cover it in clouds. I still hear your voice in my head is loud. Okay, so the first thing I notice is that this is really kick dominant and it's got a really cool kick because the kick is kind of fat and ringy and boomy, if that makes sense. So listen to the length of the kick drum, meaning how long it extends. It's got a long doom to it. But take the sun and cover it in clouds. I still hear your voice. The kick is also super loud. It's the loudest element in this mix, which is cool because it kind of drives the energy of the beat and kind of gives it a bit of a hip hop feel. I'm gonna take your smile and turn it upside down. The next thing that jumps out is pay attention to the snare. Your voice in my head is loud. I'll turn up this song. Now what's cool is there's a bit of a dichotomy in this, right? So the kick drum is kind of rolled off and really warm sounding and has this really nice long extension and thump to it, right? But the snare is kind of bright and smacky and it's loud, not as loud as the kick, but it definitely adds like this mega high end energy. So there's not a lot of attack in the kick. There's a lot of thump and knock and push, but in the snare, there's a lot of snap to it. So it's kind of crunchy. Check that out. It almost sounds like a snare and a clap are kind of layered. I'll turn up this song just to drown you away. Drown these, man. Now what else is kind of cool is pay attention to like the symbols, right? There's a hi-hat. Now it's kind of neat because we're using an actual hi-hat there, but it's kind of done in like what you would expect to hear on like a hip hop track, right? Where they've got like an electronic, like a up there. So instead of that, they mellow out the track by using an actual hi-hat that's kind of warm and a fat kick. And it's a cool groove. Like I really like the arrangement of this. I'm gonna take your smile and turn it upside down. I'm now you notice in terms of the hi-hat and the snare, right? The snare is brighter than the hi-hat and a lot of the frequency energy in the top end is pushed there and the hi-hat is kind of on the warmer side to go with the kick. So again, it creates a cool dichotomy. If the snare was kind of warm, it would kind of, it would change the way that the groove feels. So whoever mixes did a really good job to make this interesting and have something that's kind of unexpected. And I definitely wouldn't expect, usually the hi-hat is really bright compared to, for example, the snare. So it's cool to see somebody kind of flip that type of choice. And I think it works because it's a pretty mellow song. If you had a really bright hi-hat, it would definitely up the energy of it instead of kind of make it feel more somber. Okay, so what else is going on instrumentally here? I'm gonna take the sun and cover it in clouds. Now you notice that there's no bass instrument. There's no bass guitar. There's no like 808 or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like it's just totally naked push of the kick. And that's, I think why the kick is so fat and long because there's no bass for it to compete with. So they wanted to fill the space. There's a very subtle guitar that's in there that's super affected out even more than the intro that kind of just fills in that lower mid range and kind of gives it this dark feeling. Take the sun and cover it in clouds. And that guitar is heavily filtered, meaning it's rolled off on the top end and the bottom end. There's not a lot of sub or bass in it. You know, there's not a lot of high treble. I still hear your voice in my head is loud. I'll turn up this song just to drown you away. I like how they throw in some chimey guitars there kind of in the space. Turn up this song just to drown you away. Drown me. Definitely builds tension to the next section because it's like it comes in, it's low, it's quiet, it's chill, and then boom, you bring in a little bit of high ear candy with some transient in it to get your just attention shifted. Memories till the bottle's empty cause the and I like that's how the, it's the only thing they add here. The okay, let's take a look at the vocal production here. Now, what do we got? I'm gonna take the sun and cover it in so while the track is kind of on the darker side, 
The voice is actually bright, but it's still warm. I know that sounds like a contradiction. <laughs> how can something be bright and warm? Listen to how smooth the top end of the voice is, okay? It's not, there's not a lot of like really ultra high top frequency air in it, but it's definitely got that upper mid range accentuated so it's bright enough to cut through the track and just be front and center. But like I said, at the same time, it's got a very smooth top end. There's not a lot of sibilance to it. Nothing kind of like, you know, makes your ears go not really aggressive. So. I think it's mixed really, really well. Okay, listen to the ambience and the voice. It's really, really hard to make out the vocal effects, which is cool because it's one of those things, the way this is mixed, if you were to mute the effects on the vocals, like the reverbs, the delays, et cetera, you'd know something is wrong and the vocals would disconnect from the mix. But the fact is, is that like, they're in there in a way where they don't draw any attention. They don't stand out. It sounds very kind of dry and upfront and intimate. Yeah. Now. All right, chorus. Let's break this chorus down a little bit and talk about this. So what do you notice right away when this comes in? Two things. Bass, right? We finally got our bass. And we have these like ooh, ooh, ooh vocals that are in there that kind of add that. Like, hey, it's the chorus. Pay attention. Okay, so let's focus on the bass first and then we'll work our way up to the vocals. The bass is definitely a bass guitar. It doesn't sound like an 808 or anything like that. I can hear the picking being played. The bass is very filtered in terms of the frequency space. It's above the kick, so all of the sub in this mix is still in the kick drum, right? So you have that driving the mix with the eighth note, the do 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 do, right? It's above the kick drum, it's in there, it's subtle. You feel it more than you hear it. But it definitely makes the chorus bigger. Okay, so what else makes this chorus pop? Pay attention to the ooh vocals. And those are actually pretty loud. It, it's almost like that counter melody becomes like an extra guitar part or something like that, you know, because if we were doing like a rock song, you might have the rhythm guitars come up and it get wider and bigger, you know, and crunchier. But here they've just done it with some ooze, which I think is a really cool. Very, very, very clever move. It's a nice counter melody, you know? I mean, the, the hook is just sick. I just love this hook. You gotta be careful listening to this song. This won't get stuck in your head for a long time and you won't get it out. But the ooh counter melody, in terms of mixing, your brain can only really focus on one thing, which is like the main thing. But the ooh counter melody supports the main melody so well that it's not distracting. It kind of just like, you know, they can coexist, which sometimes in mixing is very, very rare. So this is executed brilliantly. Listen to the guitar layers that are in. In and out of love. So again, we have a super duck guitar. There's a couple more notes. The guitar is not quite as rolled off as the verse. I mean, minus that little top end chimey transient guitar, but it's in there. And it just adds a big wall of mid range. And what I like about this mix is like overall, this is like a really warm kind of like gelled mix. You know what I mean? Like everything kind of just melds together. It's not super separated. It's not super clean. It's just kind of like, it feels good. It just kind of blends together. There's some keyboards and stuff that are in there very subtly and like synths. It's really hard to hear them, but listen for it. You hear the ambience of that stuff more than you hear the actual like melody or note. You won't call back. Little lo-fi drum on the transition. All right, so now we have this bridge and they introduce like a new lead here. Let's check that out. which is just kind of like a playback on the vocal, right? And here you can hear the underlying guitar is more under it, but it's kind of mixed the same way as the vocal. Do you hear how much saturation is on that synth? Now we bring in the, you know, the hip hop hat. So that's a nice little, you know, homage to hip hop right there. 
So, I mean, yeah, this is a pretty straightforward song. I think that's where I'm going to end it on this mix. I love this mix. I love how this song's produced. Like I said, don't listen to this too many times because this one will get stuck in your head. Not Ian Dior's most famous song or anything like that, but this is definitely, I think, my favorite of his entire catalog. It's kind of like the sleeper. So I had to do a video on it. So let me know what you think of this mix in the comments below. It's an absolute certified banger. I think the mix is phenomenal and I wish I knew who did it. So if you know who did this song and you can find out, drop it in the comments. That being said, if you want to learn how to mix, check out nailthemix.com. I do plenty of cool mixing content on my TikTok and my Instagram. That's at Joel Wanasek. Um, thank you so much for watching. And please, if you enjoyed this content, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And of course, if you got anything you want me to break down, drop it in the comments. Have a great day, everybody.